everyone. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome back to Build. Based in the south side of Chicago, The Shy is a coming of age story about residents trying to live their lives in a place where dangers threaten to squelch streams and the simplest decisions can have life or death consequences. Today, I'm sitting down with Yolanda Ross, who plays Jada, a single mother who is finally starting to make some time for herself. Take a look. Now I'm really sorry. I do not want to date your dad, okay? And what's the big deal if I did want to date somebody? I'm grown. I raised my child. You don't need to date nobody. There's only one man you'll ever need, your son, who worships and adores you, and I'll be the one to take care of you when you're old or wrinkled. Ooh. Now I see why you got all them little girls running after you. Pinky swear, you won't ever date. Ever. Damn it, boy. Get the pinky out of my face. Put your hands together for Yolanda Ross, guys. Good morning. How you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing excellent. Good. Yeah, and even more so once I found out you're from Omaha. Too. Guys, we're both from Omaha, Nebraska. This is crazy, y'all. Everybody Two black asks, girls from Omaha. Exactly. Like, in New yeah. York. Black girls from Omaha. It's for real. We can make it, guys. Yeah. We can make it. Um, <laughs> And we're going to talk more about that later because I want to know more about like your how you got to where you are because you're on this amazing show that just got picked up for its third season, which is yeah. so great. Congratulations. How does Thank that feel? You. Thank you. How does that feel for you? Um, yeah, it feels amazing. I got a job, <laughs> you know, uh, but it's a great job uh, and it doesn't feel like we're getting to, you know, bring to life these characters that we get to and tell these stories. Uh, and to be on this kind of show that is saying something that means something to people, it's very exciting. What is that process like when you guys find out? Because you're in the middle of season two, mm -hmm. so do you just shoot like that's going to be it before you um, know? Well, yeah, I mean, we shoot, you know, we shoot out, we finished in November. Yeah. And, um, you know, you go on as an actor, you just go on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but of course you're always thinking in your head, you know, I wonder where my character is going to go next or where they're going to take things next. So I think in this case, you're only thinking positive, like, mm -hmm. yes, we are coming back. Not, hmm, I wonder. It's like, no, we're coming back. Yeah. yeah. Especially with your character too, who I love Jada because she, she's just doing the best that she can and she <laughs> takes care of everybody around her. And I like where her story is going, where you see her now starting to carve out some space for herself. So yes. tell audiences who maybe haven't seen The Shy who Jada is for you. Um, Jada is a common sense type of woman mm -hmm. to me, a uh, person. She, you know, is a caregiver. Uh, she takes care of her. Oh, wait, I just saw somebody I know. <laughs> um, uh, she takes care of her son um, and she takes care of Miss Ethel, she takes care of, of a lot of people, I would say. And, and the person that she seems to take care of the least so far has been herself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true of a lot of, um, I want to say a lot of single mothers, a lot of single women, a lot of women in general. I feel we are caregivers. Um, in this case, you know, she's cut the cord with her son. He's going to have to, like, learn to fly on his own. And um, she's going to have to learn to fly, too. Yeah. I do love that moment where she was just done playing with him. She was like, I yeah, got a I'm one like, bedroom <laughs> apartment. I'm moving. You need to find a place to live. Mm -hmm. One and bedroom. There's so many women who I I see who put up with stuff from their kids for too long. And I was so proud of Jada in that moment. Well, it's, I think it's a hindrance yeah. when you do. Because, I mean, I've seen it before. Um, I understand that you care for them. They are yours and you want to make sure they're okay. But I think there's a point where you go too far and they don't learn. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and that's a hindrance because when you're out in the world, you don't have somebody holding your hand or taking care of you all the time. You have to figure things out for yourself. So how much of Jada did you know about going into and how much have you kind of developed or just done sort of in your mind, created a backstory for her just to sort of like be able to fall into her, you know, when you're acting? Um, you know, when I read for the part, she was one of two characters that I liked in that one year of, you know, um, auditions. And the one thing I can say about her when, when I was reading the, you know, the script, the lines and everything, she just made sense. Mm -hmm. Like dialogue was coming out easy where I didn't have to like, you know, work on learning the lines that much. Like what came out of her mouth made sense to me. So it just came. 
Um, so that says a lot. It says a lot about the writing. It says a lot about the character. She just rang really true to me. And I would say out of every character I've played, she's probably the closest to me. Mm. Yeah. In which ways? Um, I guess the strength in taking care of people and just the, the process, her thinking process, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so what are your hopes for her? As we've mentioned, she, you know, she has her little one bedroom now. Mm -hmm. She was just talking about dating a little bit in that clip. What are yeah. your hopes for her without, I guess, spoiling anything? Um, well, I hope that she, I hope that she gets to go on those dates. Um, I think it, it's interesting to see her go through that process because I, I like to see this character go through what I know single women go through. You know, whether it's good or bad, just to see it on screen with us you know, through us, um, because I think that's the difference a lot of times in what's on TV and what's not. I don't feel we always get to see, you know, women of color going through this, you know, black women going through this. Um, and it's, it's a very real situation, because I feel like every friend I have is single, <laughs> you know, and that's a real thing. Um, so I'd like to see what she goes through in that dating process. I think that's one of the reasons why audiences have really resonated with the show, why we're gonna get to see Come Back for a third season, mm -hmm. is because these stories are being told in a really authentic, sincere way. Nothing is larger than life. It's actually these yeah. very simple, relatable stories, and I can watch the show and assign it to somebody I know in my real life. Yeah, exactly. You know? People see themselves in these characters, yeah. or they see somebody they know in these characters, yeah. and the situations, because they aren't, you know, crazy, you know, storylines that bigger than life, like you said, yeah. they're what people deal with on a day to day. What kind of feedback have you had from fans? <laughs> Maybe specifically even single mothers, I could see them really oh, reaching wait out a minute. to you. Um, I feel like, you know, things have been super positive. It's no, 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 no. I'm not saying that anything went bad, but it's really funny. The uh, this, this last week, um, episode four with the ex coming into play, Ooh, the comments. Ooh, the comments. <laughs> Y'all were like, ooh. Um, it's really funny because people had definite things to say about Darnell and Jada. And um, and you know, and you know that strikes a nerve because that ex, that ex has like a little thing over you, you know, and that's for real. And it's like, I, I know somebody just commented, like, oh, she remember he like six sugars. It was like, well, <laughs> yeah, you know, but is she gonna give it up? Is she gonna, you know, it's like all these things. But it's all there. That's, you know, that's kind of reality, how it is. And especially if you're like somebody that hasn't been with anybody, you know, and then that ex who like wrecked your nerves and wrecked your life kind of comes back into play. It's like you want to make sure you look good before you open that door. You don't want to just look like any old thing. And then he's like coming in his tracksuit looking like whatever. But, it, you know, it's like you just, it's a thing. You know, it's a very specific feeling. See, and I felt like she might have given it up, but then he, asked, <laughs> but then he asked for some money, and she was like, "Hell out of my house." Yeah, like that's why I left our I was like, "Is he serious right now?" Yeah, that I, was. I he was, was crazy. Yeah, yeah, I was looking at the comments of people on mm -hmm. that one. That was hilarious because yeah, he was crazy. He was crazy yeah, coming yeah. and asking for anything. I personally feel he just came through to that's just. Sweet. You know, yeah. he sabotaged himself, though. Uh huh. As yeah. As running. soon as he opened his mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you also have a lot of scenes with LaDonna Tittle, who plays Miss Ethel. Um, yes. And that, you know, the, the premiere of season two episode where she's her character is attacked was really tough to watch. It was rough. Uh, what was that like for you? Because I would imagine you have bonded with her. You have so many scenes with her. So was yeah. it hard to watch that? Um, yeah, it was really hard to watch that. Because, I mean, um, like, to be truthful, they did the makeup so well that when... Because I hadn't seen her. Because so, I'm not in that scene, you know. So when I did first see her, I was completely shocked because she looked a wreck. And I was like... I didn't know what was going on. Because, you know, it's like you kind of don't... Uh, you know, when you're not part of the other scenes, you don't always kind of pay attention fully about what's happening with the other characters. And I didn't quite realize she was getting beat down like that. And uh, yeah, it's hard. it was hard to watch. It was hard to look at her, um, even in the scenes in the hospital, because it just, it reminds me of my grandmother, you know. Um, it's brutal. 
it's brutal. And that's on a rise, I feel, you know, elderly abuse. And that's, as well, in this case, this was, you know, somebody ransacking your home and everything. But it's uh, that's a scary, it's a scary situation. Yeah, it did for me put a face on. We do hear these stories every mm -hmm. once in a while, and you sort of don't connect to them. You're like, oh, that's horrible. Seeing it in art this way, yes, struck me in a really strong way. And I feel like next time I hear these stories, we need to maybe pay a little more attention. And that's what the show yeah. does. It's continually yeah. kind of like shedding light on these. Issues that we read about all the time, but it humanizes them mm -hmm. in a way that I think is really special. I mean, another situation like that was uh, when Kevin was with his two moms in the, I don't know, at the courthouse or whatever, the place they were at, and there was a little boy that walked by with handcuffs on. That, you know, that was a quiet, quick moment, but it was like, oh, because he looked like he was like maybe eight, you know, nine, maybe, I don't know, like 11 or 12 or something, but he was a child in handcuffs, you know, and that, that's scary. It just strikes you even more. Yeah. Um, so while I have you here, and we're both from Omaha, I want to talk about your journey a little bit. Um, Obviously, you're on this really big show, but I want to go back to the beginning. How did you go from Omaha to Hollywood New and New York? York? Uh, how did I go from the big O, <laughs> which we call it? Or Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> Omaha. Is that just me? <laughs> no, I, I actually never heard that oh, one. Oh, Omaha. What's that for? Yeah, like Omaha is my Omaha. Oh, my It's goodness. a dad joke. I'm yeah, sorry, guys. It's early. It was a bad one. It was a bad one. It's all good. It's all good. Um, well, I actually came here to New York uh, for fashion. And back in the day, my school was actually right next door. Uh, it was called Toby Coburn. And um, it's not there anymore. But... That's where I went to school, and I did, I did Windows. I actually, because this was like Tower Records, I did Windows and Tower Records back in the day, you know, cutting and everything. Um, but I made clothes. I did Windows. I merchandised. I was a buyer, so I was in the fashion industry, and um, I was in Soho at this store called uh, Nana. And somebody in the store worked on SNL, and one weekend she was sick. And I asked if I could fill in because she did extra work. So I got, they, they let me. I ended up, they kept hiring me. So I ended up getting my union card and then I got an agent and it really just unfolded in that way. Um, and also there's somebody in the audience, Eric, <laughs> Eric Adams. I met his dad here, say Adams at Tower Records. And it's so funny because this like takes me back. Like when I was going to school here, I met Say, and Say lived with Adam Horowitz from the Beastie Boys, and I ended up being in Fight for Your Right to Party. So this was all just like trickling, like just things busting off. Yeah, and, and that's not gonna happen in Omaha. Mm -mm. I don't know no Beastie Boys in Omaha. So, you know, so it was just like being in the city where things happen, things happen. And I think you just, for one thing for me, the biggest thing was just, being open and paying attention and, and go where you're being led, you know, um, because there was no plan on any of this. I didn't go to school for acting. Um, I didn't set out to act, uh, but I, I have always been creative and I feel like I was literally just led here because there was no thought of it and no expectation and so with that, I mean, I'm open. Now I'm writing and directing as well. So I'm following where I'm being led. That's really special. I love that. Thank you. Um, if you didn't study acting, what have you done then just to make sure that you're honing your craft? Or have you had mentors or people along the way who have sort of helped you develop or grow as an actor? Uh, you know, there's definitely there are actors that I really like. Um, and that you know, and that I, I like watching and and seeing what they do, and it's a it's a truthfulness. Um, and I, you know what it's like. I can't remember <laughs> names. I'm like sitting here trying to think. There's one in particular that I wanted to mention, but it's like I cannot get his name. Um, the one that's gonna kill me. But um, it's paying attention to human behavior. That is the thing that I've always been drawn to. Uh, whether you like the people or the personality or not, it's a certain truthfulness to just be them without judgment. So no judgment, but take in the behavior, you know, and um, just pay attention to how people act and react. Because I feel that, 
you know, when it comes to writing, when it comes to character, there are just there are ways that we do things. There are way that ways that the mind works, you know. And then you take that with what's given in the script, you know, and then you put it all together. Um, something that keeps me my emotions in line is music, though. Music, I use that for breaking down scripts. But what do you mean by breaking down for breaking down um, scripts? Well, it's like I'll use it in like if you look at a script that I've gone through, it probably looks like sheet music in a way because it's like I have my own little like markings that I use. But I sing, so it helps me like having a large repertoire of music. I will use music emotionally to get me to a place and keep me there, or I will use it in a way I know how it makes me feel in my body when I sing certain notes, and it can make things come out of me. So I know how to use music for me as an instrument. Is there a, an artist or a genre of music that Jada is connected to for you? <sighs> a good question. Yeah. I'm into this whole um, music because music does evoke so many emotions. It's just interesting to hear that that's part of your process. Well, you know, it's it's funny. It's not a one particular one because it really is it's moments. So, you know, for me with Jada, I felt it's funny. I use probably music with her the least because she just seemed like me. Um, but in, even within saying that, there are times when I've used sort of melancholy music, um, things without words that, you know, a lot of Pat Metheny, things like that, that just kind of take you places, jazz. So musically, um, is that something you want to do more of in your career? I know you've done a little theater. Would you like to do a musical? or? Um, yeah, I would love to. Um, it's sort of like you end up taking what comes your way. I did start out trying to do the music first because I wasn't thinking about acting, but then acting kind of came up and then theater came up and uh, because I'm part of the Labyrinth Theater Company here in New York and you know we've done things at the public, but not musicals. Um, I would like to do one. Yeah. yeah. Is there a specific musical or role that in theater, it could be beyond mm. that you would just be interested in trying one day? Well, there's August Wilson's pieces. And, you know, and there's things that I've written that I would like to get out there. Yeah. So yeah. how much are you, you mentioned directing as well. So you really yes. just love being in the industry, whether it's in front well, or behind. Well, it's creating. Yeah, creating. You know, because you're creating story, you're creating character. And, you know, for black women, and black people, I feel there's a lot of characters that we just still have not seen. Or I feel I haven't seen myself. I've seen versions, but I haven't seen myself on screen. You know, how I live my life, how I think, how I feel. I haven't seen it yet. So I think it's time. And, um, you know, something that I've been coming up against while, because I was supposed to be shooting right now, but financing fell out. And so we're now going after new financing so that we can shoot the top of next year. And um, something that I've been coming up against is a lot of times you're, you know, you're going to white people for money. And, um, you know, well, we're developing something like that. I can tell y'all, you know, I can tell you as I know it, if it's not starring black people, it is not the same story. You know, you can have all the same circumstances, but going through our filter, we deal with things that white people will never deal with. You know, we will see things in different ways and, you know, and we will still, we will see things in the same way as well, but it's a different filter. And if you haven't seen it yet, that means you, it, it doesn't matter if you're developing something like it. You haven't seen this. So. I, love, I love that you say that, that you haven't seen yourself, because I feel that way all the time, and a lot mm -hmm. of black women, no, you know, I, know. I think a lot of the I, time trust people me, I know. are super homogenous. It's like, oh, no, we have very different experiences. We come from Omaha. Mm -hmm. Right there we have yeah, that, a completely different So that's different a whole different thing. Yeah. And you know what? Brittany sees things one way. Yolanda see things, yeah. sees things one way. And they just affect us differently. So it's not the same. Yeah. You know, I'm not Viola. I'm not Angela. I'm not, you know, things don't come out of us the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they it's a it's a funny it's a funny circle to be in because you have to get the money from people to make the thing but if they only are comfortable with one thing it kind of keeps you in that one thing 
zone, you know, whereas why wouldn't you want to see all the different variations? Because it's the thing you haven't seen that always seems to like be the thing that's the new thing exactly. instead of the same thing. Right. That's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. But your point is we need more Issa Rays. Like we need different, yeah, you know, what she did was great, but we need to. the diverse. Exactly. You know, so, yeah. I love that. I think that's so important. I, I do like to think it's, I'm seeing more and more diverse narratives, but, you know, we still have a long way to go. Exactly. Right. Well, I know we have a couple questions before we get out of here. Well, all right. Who do we have first? Hi. <laughs> I have a question from buildseries.com. One of your fans wants to know who's your favorite person to do scenes with on the show. To do what with? To do scenes with. I feel like I've only done a f- had a few people. Um, I do like Rolando Bryce a lot. Um, and he plays Darnell. He's really funny. He's really funny. And I love Emmett. I mean, Jacob Lattimore, of course. Next question. Hi. So um, you touched upon this a little bit, but I was just wondering where with Jade as a character, we get to know so much early on through a strong relationship with others. Now that we see you're kind of in a place where she's distancing herself from people that have been kind of taking a toxic role in her life and finding herself, how do you as a performer look to kind of grow the character beyond our initial understanding of her? Hmm. I, I feel her interaction with other people will help sort of see how she grows, you know, because we keep seeing her interact with the same people, and I think we'll learn more about her through other relationships, other people. We have a lot to look forward to, Jada, and I'm glad that we have a third season. Me too. So we can really see her story grow and change, because I remember when Lena Waithe announced this show was happening, I was so excited, and to see how it's continued to grow and the stories it's telling, it's so important. Yeah, Yeah. they are really doing it, so I'm so happy to be a part of it. Yeah, and thank you for being a part of it. And uh, if you guys want to check out, The Shy airs Sundays at 9 p.m. on Showtime. Put your hands together for Yolanda Ross. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. 